most shocking images are from Huntington Beach, California, where at the conclusion of the U.S. Open of surfing on Sunday, a white mob began rioting. The angry crowd vandalized property, broke the windows of businesses, looted some stores, and brawled with each other on the streets of downtown Huntington Beach. Police used rubber bullets on the unruly mob and arrested at least seven people, including a firefighter from Anaheim. You probably haven't heard much about the white riot in Huntington Beach, and that's because the story of white criminal culture is not a story the mainstream media will tell you. But once you scratch the surface, these stories are everywhere you look. Take billionaire hedge fund manager Steve Cohn, for instance. How many times this week have you heard about the federal charges he's been slapped with for alleged insider trading violations? And what about J.P. Morgan Chase, a company run almost entirely by white men? Well, that financial giant quietly paid $410 million in a settlement after being accused of manipulating the power markets. The sad truth is that the white power structure in this country has no clue, no clue, how to solve the problems within the white community. Look, I don't want people to be suspicious of white men, but the Huntington Beach riot underlines a stark truth about white culture. The fact is, 84% of white murder victims are killed by other white people. And we really do have to question whether white leadership, where they are on this issue. Conversation is sorely lacking an appeal from the moderate white community. After all, no one forces white people to throw haymakers after their surfing competitions. And when white youth are raised with so much privilege and so few boundaries, these young white men often reject concepts of self-control and not being a jerk. Some people may feel like I'm stereotyping. I don't care. I'm dealing with reality. The white community needs to ask itself, how are we going to deal with this problem? Finally, there is one brave writer in the mainstream media raising that question. Gawker columnist Cord Jefferson handed out a healthy dose of truth following the Huntington Beach white riot. Whites in America have been out from under their European ancestors' boot heels for centuries. California specifically outlawed preferences for non-whites in state hiring and education nearly two decades ago. So being oppressed is no longer an excuse for behavior like this. How long must we wait for the white community to get its act together? Joining me now is Cord Jefferson, the West Coast editor for Gawker.com, author of the aforementioned column, A Dangerous and Irresponsible Culture. Cord, you're not going to hear this kind of thing in the mainstream media. My question to you is, what inspired you to finally rip off this taboo and talk about the problems with white culture? Uh, you know, um, I'm a person of color, Chris, but first and foremost, I consider myself an American citizen and a resident of Southern California. And seeing what the mob did... Uh, in Huntington Beach on Sunday night. I just felt there was no way that I could sit on the sidelines anymore in good conscience and wa watch uh, so many white youths debase themselves the way that they are. You know, um, and so I think that sometimes people have to stick their necks out. I, uh, I don't want to use the word martyr, but I guess I'm kind of a martyr on this front. You know, th th there are people that are going to tell you that it's just a few bad apples. If you look at the video, you can't say this whole group, uh, oh, you know, this has nothing to do with white people. It's just a few bad apples. What do you say to that? Uh, to that, I say that if, if, if that's your actual belief, then you're living with your head in the sand. Um, I used to live in New York City and would uh, occasionally go to Hoboken, New Jersey, St. Patrick's Day Parade. Um, and there were so many young white men there vomiting in the streets, urinating in the streets, getting in fist fights in the streets. Um, it, was, it was a I've sight seen to it. be seen. I've seen, it it was, my, I've seen it myself. I, you, there's, there's college dorms you can go to, every other room. Yeah, and the, and there's the, and a bong. And there are people talking about how much, drug, how much they enjoy drugs, a drug culture that people... And, and and white elders don't say anything about it. They kind of nink, they wink, and they nod. You're looking at, uh, they're, they're learning, the, and the thing is, is that these, these young people are learning this kind of behavior in lacrosse camps, they're learning this kind of behavior at college spring break, they're learning this kind of behavior at Ivy League fraternities where drug use and binge drinking are normalized behaviors. Um, and these kinds of places are, are kind of the hives of moral debasement that, that, that are leading to, I think, uh, the, the, what, what we're seeing, is, which, is, which is this white, on, white crime scourge. Here, here's my question to you. People are going to say, you know, the, this is someone who has a personal problem with white people. Do you have a personal problem with white people? Is this, is this animus? No, I think, I think any time that you tell, tr tell the truth, uh, there's going to be those people who come out and think that you're doing it for some insidious reason and, and say, say that you're a racist. Um, I kind of knew that some uh, white people were going to say that this is just... Uh, I, I'm sorry, I knew that, knew that some white people were going were to call this playing the race card, but it, it isn't playing the race card. Uh, my best friend is white. Uh, my mother is actually white. Uh, my, my prom date in high school was a, was a white woman. She was very white, actually. She... Uh, 
she used to ride horses and, and do that whole thing. So obviously very, very deep. I have very deep roots in the, in the white community uh, that, that uh, this, isn't, this isn't hatred for whites. This is just tough love, and I felt it was time that somebody told the truth to these people. It's a hard conversation, but it's one we need to have. And, and I'm glad we're having it. And my question to you, Court, is what is it going to take to get the white power structure, prominent whites, Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, to start speaking out on this kind of thing, to start talking about the St. Patty's Day parades, to start talking about the drug culture on campuses, to start to even just just take the first step and condemn the Huntington Beach riots. You know, I wish that I knew. I wish that I knew. Uh, when I look towards the white leadership, when I look towards the Justin Biebers of the world and the Rush Limbaugh's of the world and the Sean Hannity's of the world, I often hear them talking about the problems within the black community, but I, I, I have yet to really see them take a serious long look at the problems within the white community and, and look at these look at the, these kinds of violent offenses that are going on within, within white neighborhoods and, and on white college campuses all the time. Um, and that's, that's been difficult to watch. And, and so I, to them, I would just say... Uh, uh, physician, uh, heal thyself first, and, and I'm glad that people like you are, are stepping up in the white community and really sort of looking at this, looking at this problem for what it is, which is a serious, serious issue. We appreciate that. Cord Jefferson, the West Coast editor for Gawker.com. Thank you. Thank you. If you watched that segment and thought that's an absolutely ridiculous premise and an absolutely terrible way to talk about millions of people who share nothing, nothing, except their general broad pigmentation, you are correct. And remember that the next time you hear those same arguments, but with a different word in place of the word white. And that's the memo. We'll be right back with click three.